One moment. So you're about to tell a story with me that seems to have not a lot to do with mothers. But let me tell you what I found when I looked up Mother's Day. The history of Mother's Day. First, let me ask you. Raise your hand if you know the history of Mother's Day. Yes? Can you say where it started? I it's okay. Block on her name, but it was it was a war protest. That's right. Uh, that's yes, that's one of the starts. Was was yeah. And a journey. Uh, phones, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, actually, and I'll share with you now, this actually is a great moment. It's fine to use your phone to document some of this story. Please share some of the pictures with me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're right. That's one of the starts of Mother's Day, but let me tell you, it goes much further back. If you go down the rabbit hole, it starts in ancient Greece with the Romans and the Greeks, and they were celebrating Rhea, the Titan, who was the mother of all the gods. And then later on, in medieval times in Europe, we see Mothering Sunday, and that's the fourth weekend of Lent, where regardless of your status, because you didn't get to see your family every day, depending on what you did, but on the fourth Sunday, you could go home and see your family. That was Mothering Sunday. And then years and years later, yes, Anna Jarvis. Anna Jarvis had started again, but it did not look the way it does today. When she started it, it was Mother's Work, oh, look at my notes, Mother's Work Day. She called it Mother's Day Work Club in West Virginia. Now, during the Civil War, she would gather other women, and they would go around West Virginia sharing safe birth practices how to keep it, your area clean, the best conditions for life, how to fight disease. And then when the war happened, she and these women treated both sides. After the war, she changed this day with her mother to be called Mother's Friendship Day. And the original purpose of this day was for mothers to visit hospitals of veterans and give them flowers and encourage them to reconcile. It was a day of peace where people came together. And, and I hope you heard me. These mothers, did they visit their children in the hospital? Oh, you can say it. No. 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 Because the idea of nurturing, of sacrifice, is bigger than that. She recognized that it was the community. And on Mother's French Day, she would reach out and say, You are nurtured. You are loved, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on. What lessons could we take from that? And so Anna Jarvis, she fought. She pushed, she quit her job. And she began to try to fight for this to become a national holiday. A day, one day of the year, where we come together and recognize everyone in our community and reach across the aisle and say, you're here, you're welcome, you're cared for, you're loved. Reach over to someone and shake their hand. I'm inviting all of you. I am welcoming all of you with me this year to celebrate Mother's Day the way it was intended. That we are all part of the community and we are all reaching out to one another. This is a day where we can honor the sacrifices that were made for us to, to light the path and the sacrifices we make for those that we love in our community. That's what Mother's Day is supposed to be. Now let me tell you the end of this historical tale. So Anna Jarvis, we know she won. But one of her financial backers that was helping her 
The same day she celebrated the first Mother's Day with her fellowship in the church, he celebrated in his store. The, the consumer, the commodification of Mother's Day. She was so angry that it became meals, specials, and diners, and everyone was buying carnations. She was once arrested for interrupting the sale of carnations for Mother's Day. <laughs> arrested. She also was known for going to restaurants that had a Mother's Day special meal, and she would order it, she'd get up, she'd drop it on the floor. <laughs> so if you haven't gotten a card or flowers, guess what you're celebrating the original way? Yes, you really are. <laughs> we don't need money for this holiday, this holiday about love and about sacrifice. So, now let me tell you how all of this journey led me to choose one calorie shell for you. So, recently, my grandfather uh, got his ancestry done. You all heard about ancestry.com? And uh, he's not really good with computers. So he had my uncle take a picture of the screen with his phone and then email that to me. <laughs> um, so I had a very small portion of what his history looked like. But it, it moved me to get curious and want to know my own. So I did my own ancestry. And I got my results. At first, I just read them, you know. But about 20 minutes later, I was driving. I had to pull over because I realized in that moment that science has shared with me a history that has been denied my family for generations. Now, I know the countries that I'm from, and I know what that means. See, I'm a folklorist. And let me tell you right now the difference between a story and a folklore. Raise your hand if you know it. That's okay, they don't really teach us a lot in schools. So a story is three parts, right? Beginning, middle, and end. But a folk tale, a folk tale we have to vote on as a generation. A folk tale is made when grandparent tells grandchild, when father tells son. A generation has to tell the next generation. And that is how a folk tale is born. And so then I began to think, now that I know all these nations that comprise me, I can go back and I can get my messages. What stories did my grandmothers leave for me? And I want you to consider this when you read the stories of your past, that these are the instructions left for our guardians from the past. This has been leading the path for us. So I found a story from Vinny, which is off the coast of Africa. It is waterfront. Well, now it's a country called Vinny. Back when this tale was born, it was the Dahomean Empire. The tale I'm going to share with you now is 500 years old. Now, I want you to hear this tale, you're going to tell it with me. And at the end, I want you to tell me what are the instructions that my mother is left for me? What are the instructions that all of us as a community can find in all these stories left for us? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, first you have to know how to tell a story, right? So, uh, Let's start with something a little easier. Let's start with a poem. So I'm going to split, well, you really kind of set yourselves on your side, right? Ah, but I'm going to split you into one more group, the group behind me. Okay, the group behind me, I want you to practice putting your hands together like someone else. Good. Fall away. Want to be ready. Got it. My group on this side, I want you to practice beating your belly like a drum. Good. Let that fall away. And everyone on this side, I want you to practice playing your nose <laughs> like a whore. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, everyone. So when I point to your side, I want you to start playing. If I point to your side and I raise my hands up and down like this. That means I want you to play your part louder. If I wiggle my fingers down like this, I want you to play your part softer. If I raise my closed hand in the sky, I will let all the sound fall away. But if I raise my hand up in a circle above my head, I want all of you to play your parts 
at the very same time. Sound good? All right, let's try it. This is a poem by Shel Silverstein called Orchestra. Join us. So, you haven't got a horn? Well, just play on your nose. <laughs> Well, just be on your bed. Well, we haven't any cymbals, but we can clap our hands together. And though there may be orchestras that sound a little better with their fancy, shiny instruments that cost an awful lot, hey, we're making music twice as good. Just play what we got. <laughs> Very good. So now it seems you know how to be conducted. So now we're going to work on something else. We're going to work on creating our own sound. All sounds are music. All sounds are music. So right now, I want us to think about Mother's Day. The original Mother's Day. What it was supposed to be. Friendship. Reaching out to someone who thinks differently than you. Reconciliation. Nurturing of the community. A giving sound. A giving song. If we were to use our bodies, our environment, to create that giving sound, what does the sound sound like? Is it smoothing? Is it patting? Is it snapping? Do you use your keys? I'm going to give us a few seconds, maybe 30, and I want all of us to come up with our own giving sound. Try it. What does it sound like? Any sound. It's not even You can use what's around you. And I can let you use your voice. Is it a hum? Now we're going to play together. Remember our hand dandy conductor? Okay? Begin. Hums. I heard a lot of comfort there. That's what we think of when we think of mothers and nurturing, right? We think of that moment of comfort and safety. So now, I'm going to have us come up with more songs. Now, now we're going to come up with songs that will help me tell the story one how we show. Now, on this side of the room, I'm going to have you all create, I'm from Detroit, a hustle song. Do y'all know what hustle means? It's a very Detroit term. Hustle means hard work. Hard work. So you can use everything but your voices. So that's stomping, that's keys, that's persons, that's what you got. Make it hustle song. And over here, I need a song for journey. A path song. And I'm on a journey. I'm on a path. What does that travel sound like? Beautiful. I hear some great music. So 
and I just gave everyone in the back the instruction when I pointed them at celebration for all of you, when I raise my hand above my head and we all play our parts at the same time, we're going to play our celebration sounds. We're going to try that real quick, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I think we're ready. So, as I mentioned, one cow shell is a tale from the Holy Empire, which is right along the water and absolutely beautiful. There were kingdoms there. Now, I'm going to draw a circle in the air to start my story. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, now is the time, because it is very bad luck to interrupt a story once it's begun. Are we ready? Oh, this is interactive. You can speak to me. Are you ready? Yes. 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 All right. A long time ago, in the great Dahomean Empire, there lived a king, and his name was Dot Sebra. And Dada Segba was known. He was known for being funny. You may laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he was also known for being, well, I don't want to say cheapskate. I really don't. Um, but we'll call him frugal. Frugal with his money. And back then, if you wanted to get married, you had to provide a dowry. And a dowry is when you offer the family the bride of goats and livestock and food and currency to prove your love for this person and the greater the dowry. Well, they're more in love than right. Well, one day Dada Segba called everyone to court <laughs> and he said, My people, I am ready to find a queen and I'm going to need help because. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> this is the dowry! And he pulled out one teeny tiny little cowry shell. Well, everyone got very quiet. Except for one servant. One servant who was so popular in time and history, every one of you have used his name to this day. His name was Yo! <laughs> it was. It really was. So you stood up and said, I'll do it. I'll find you a bride for one cow shell. And everyone, <laughs> they held it in until Dada Segwin left the room and then everyone laughed. <laughs> he said, he's, he's going to find a queen for one cow shell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, maybe he could trade that cow and shell for a piece of land, <laughs> but that's it. <clears throat> and you know, he listened to them teasing him. He listened, and he left the room. And he thought, what cow and shell? You know, I could get some flint for that cow and shell. And so he went to market, and he traded his cow and shell for some flint. And he took that flint, and he went walking. And now he had a sack of grasshoppers. <laughs> and he went walking. And he didn't walk too long before he came across a grandmother and she was so upset. You see, she had a garden and she had chickens and she was trying to make beans happen in her garden. But oh, these chickens, they kept peck, peck, pecking at all her beans. She was so upset. And Yo stopped. And he thought. And he said, Have I got a deal for you? And he gave that grandmother all of his grasshoppers and the 
the chickens went after the grasshoppers and left the beans alone. And she was so happy. She took that sack and she filled it up with beans for Yo. And she offered to him, thank you so much. And Yo went walking. <laughs> And he didn't walk too far till he hit the water. And there was a fisherman out there, and this fisherman looked, well, he didn't look hungry, he looked hangry. <laughs> you know, it was about noon, he hadn't caught any fish, and he was so upset, and he was like, hey, well, what's wrong? And the fisherman said, well, I've run out of bait, and I didn't catch a thing, and now the fish are fighting. Oh, wow, well, I remember I knew he said. those beans and the fisherman threw the beans out into the water and all those fish came off looking for those beans and before you know the fisherman had a whole mess of fish. He had so much fish he offered Yo some. So now Yo had plenty of beans left and a whole bunch of fish and he went walking and it wasn't too long before Yo came across a very upset blacksmith, and this blacksmith, oh, he was sweating in the hot, hot sun, and he looked absolutely upset. And Yo said to him, well, what's wrong? Well, how, how can I help you today? And the blacksmith said to him, oh, I didn't bring any lunch, and I'm working in this heat, and oh, I'm so upset. And Yo said, have I got a deal for you? And Yo offered the blacksmith some of his fish. And so the blacksmith cooked up his fish and had a nice lunch with Yo. And he was so thankful, he offered Yo a whole bag of old tools. So now Yo had some beans, some fish, a bag of old tools. Okay. He went walking. And it wasn't too long before Yo came across a big farm. But not much was happening on this big farm, except a farmer was getting mighty upset, kicking at the equipment that just wasn't working. And Yo came up to the farmer and said, what's wrong? How can I help? And the farmer said, well, I don't have any tools to fix this at all. What am I going to do? And Yo said, have I got a deal for you? And Yo gave the farmer the old tools, and they fixed the equipment together. And that farmer was so happy, he gave Yo flour, I mean, bags and bags of flour and palm oil. And so now, Yo had some very heavy things to carry, so um, he went walking with slowly. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Now Yo was very tired, so he stopped in the very next town. And he stopped right outside the baker. But I don't smell anything. He didn't smell anything cooking. So he went up to the baker and he said, Well, what's wrong? I don't smell anything cooking in here. And the baker started crying. I don't have any flour. I don't have any oil. I can't bake anything. And Yo said, Have I got a deal for you? And Yo offered the, the baker flour and oil. And the baker picked up a whole mess of cornbread. So much food. So now Yo still had some flour left, still had some oil left, beans and fish, and now all these baked goods. Okay, now Yo's gonna go. Walking. Oh, okay, that's good enough. Oh, Yo was so tired, he really didn't go walking anymore. And it just so happens the village he stopped in was nice. Very nice. And in fact, this village was run by a chief that was very wealthy and had a beautiful young daughter. However, it's important that the story writes us you have to mention this. This daughter, as stunning as she was, she was wise, smart, lightning fast, witty. So, Yo thought he won the day, and he was so excited, he went to his room, he thought no one would hear him, and he was like, I did it, I did it, I did it. With one power shell, 
I am going to find a bride for my king? He was so excited, he didn't realize that uh, the future queen was in the next room. She could hear everything. <laughs> so, the future queen, knowing her worth, decided to call upon you. Know, Yo! <laughs> and you came. Uh, yes, uh, my, my, my future queen. <laughs> yes. And she said to him, Oh, it's very kind, all this food you've brought us for dowry, but I can't imagine eating without the rest of my community. So, please tell Dada Sedba to send a feast for my entire village. And Yo, Yo sent word to Dada Sedba, and Dada Sedba sent calabashes and calabashes of spiced rice and meats. All oh, the people ate. And all that food, but uh, uh, I'm parched. <laughs> so you please have the king send my people something to drink. And Yo went off and sent word. And Dada Sepa sent so much palm wine. So much. The people had a party that lasted seven whole days. <laughs> Queen said, Servant you! And Servant you came quickly and he said, oh, What else can I do for you? And she said, Well, it's time for me to meet my future king, but I couldn't go in these rags. Please have him send me something that's worthy of my travel to meet him. So Don Selva sent hundreds and hundreds of cowboy shells. He sent all of the finest fabrics, precious metals, and gems. And she, the future queen, put on everything she could. It was beyond fashion. <laughs> Let me tell you. She put on everything she could. It was hard to walk. <laughs> and she made sure she wore every single cow and shell. And now it was time for her to meet her new people. And as she walked, <laughs> She looked very, very wealthy. So everyone who saw her made sure that they stopped to. <laughs> and when she got to her new village, Dada Sekma was so excited. He He got a queen with. <laughs> <laughs> and now it was time for him to give Yo his just rewards. So Yo, <laughs> one moment I'm gonna. And he gave Yo one cowrie shell. <laughs> <laughs> but Yo turned that one cowrie shell into a farm. But that is a story for another day. Thank you all for telling the story with me. So I ask all of you, when we talk about those coming before us, leaving instructions to light the way, what are my instructions for my grandmothers? This story is 500 years old. So many generations of guardians have chosen to send it forward to us. Why? Not all of us. <laughs> yes? You can change your circumstances with a little hard work and a little love and guidance for other people. Yes, you can change your circumstances with hard work and love and guidance for others. 
Something that really strikes me about that story, <coughs> when we talk about nurturing, everyone Yo met, he was trying to help. He didn't come to anyone like the greedy corporation for Mother's Day. He wasn't trying to commodify them, sell them to them. He was trying to uplift his community. What else did we hear in this story? <coughs> Calm down and find out the issue with one more time. That yes. she, had, she knew her worth, the queen knew her worth, and she wasn't going to go for no reason. That's right, and that's important. This is a 500 year old story. When we talk about feminism and things that we've gone through back then, it was important to let the people of the future know that this queen knew her worth and was as bright as she was anything else. And that's so important, too. And, and then she wanted to help her community. Like, she didn't just throw parties for herself or get fancy things for herself. She fed her whole community. Exactly. She was about supporting her community. I hope we take some of these instructions as guidance from the past as we go forward. Thank you all for telling the story with me today.